Canarsie. Welcome to what was known as the 32nd Ward, the first Dutch settlement on Long Island, an original part of Brooklyn that made up flatlands. Canarsie was first documented in 1524 and became a township in 1667. This town produced its own seafood industry and commerce that shipped its natural resources all over New York State. My name is Ramon Martinez and I'm going to take you for a walk through historic Canarsie. In this tour, we will take a look at a few buildings, walk through some legendary lanes, and talk to some old-time Canarsians. It was a summer home. People came out here for vacation. But the people that were living in these summer homes loved it so much because it was really country. Right. We only had little bungalows right. on the block. The end of the block, we had farmland, which we used to go for our vegetables and everything else that they sold. What street is that? That's, this is on 98th Street. On 98th and... Between K and L, I live. And the farm was on the Avenue K. Okay. And after the war, they built the uh, two family homes there. Right. So I don't consider that on my block. My block is till the end of the bungalows. Right. Which I love very much. <laughs> and the people that moved out of Canarsie are really crazy. Yeah. Because they left something good. Yeah, a lot of history behind. They now, left something good. What are some of the things you, you remember? Well, about I remember as a child, my mother used to pack a lunch. And we went to the beach in Canarsie. In Canarsie, right. And we had a lifeguard. And it was such a wonderful place. We had everything there that you would have in Coney Island. Sure. We had all the rides, all the entertainment. We also had the Oasis, which was a bar. Right. So now, you remember the rides. Are you referring to Golden City Park? Yes, Golden, the City, Golden Park. City Park. So Golden City Park um, was the park on that side. <laughs> <laughs> I only believe in Canarsie Beach. The Canarsie Beach Park. This side. Okay. See, she knows Canarsie, the other part. The Golden City Park. You remember uh, Golden? Yeah, <laughs> where the park is. That's what she knows. She's across the, you know, the tracks from me. Right. And uh, we had rides. I remember my brother had a concession. A Rockway Parkway, where they throw the ball and you get a prize. Right. And uh, we went to the beach every week. Wow. And sometimes we were there like every day. <laughs> and um, there's so much I can tell you about Canarsie, but I feel <laughs> <laughs> everything's lost in my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. In fact, I have pictures, but I couldn't find them. My daughter oh, put them somewhere and she don't remember where with us sitting on the beach. Mm -hmm. And my brothers used to jump off the pier. Really? In Canarsie, the Canarsie Pier. Did you ever see the Canarsie Pier? The original pier, no. Well, well now they take a walk it. down there. Right. They did a nice and my job. brothers used to jump off. We also had, remember we had a boat that used to take us to Rockaway to watch the fireworks. Right. And, um, Do you remember what the name of that boat was or anything like excuse that? Excuse me? Do you remember what the name of the boat was? The boat they used to take to the these, Rockaways? one uh, of these, what do you call boats? Like, like an excursion boat. Yeah, like a small little excursion boat. Because mm -hmm. there was no, uh, no Belt Parkway. There was no Quonset Huts. There was no project where he lived. Right. I mean, this was all open land. It was all open land. And uh, we never had a supermarket like they have now. We had, where I lived, we had the A&P, Bohacks, and uh, there was another store. But we used to shop in a little, fair, you know, grocery store. Mm -hmm. And um, Avenue Well was beautiful. Yeah. It wasn't congested. It was nice. What was on Avenue Well that you were All the stores shopping. that we wanted. Really? You know, we had butchers. Uh, we had bakery, the best bakery in town. Reinhardt's. Reinhardt's. <laughs> Reinhardt's Bakery. Yeah, the best. In fact, when I was in kindergarten, my teacher took us on a trip, and we went to Reinhardt's Bakery mm -hmm. so we could see how they make the uh, cakes and things. Really? They took us in the back, like, with right. ovens were. And uh, then they gave us um, 
what do you call it? Um, how do you call that there? It's like white top. What do you call that? Like I, a, I forgot uh, the name of that cake. Like a funnel cake, you mean? No, or no, no. Like a, it's a crumb cake. A crumb cake, okay. And ever since then, that's all I like is crumb cake. <laughs> yeah. Got to remember it as a child. Right, right. And uh, we had a police station, as we have now. Where, where was we, the police station that, that was you remember? 69, it was 69. Uh, and, and it was on Glenwood Road? Yeah. Yes. Right? We had the same firehouse. And... Um, the school, she went to one end. That's probably where he went toward that end. Uh, we had uh, one school, which at the time was two schools, her school and my school. Yeah, That's all Canarsie had. So they were both in the same building? No, no. Oh. I said she's on the other end of the road. Okay. <laughs> on the side, she's on that. Okay. I'm school right up the road here. Okay. She's at, on Flatlands Avenue there. Okay. Or Remsen Avenue. What is it? Flatlands. 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 Flatlands Avenue. She went to that school, and I went to the one right here. And uh, I can remember every teacher I had there. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what I did last night, <laughs> but I can remember all you about. Remember all about old Canarsie. All, yeah. all about Canarsie, the best place to live. Yeah. And even though my kids are trying to get me out of here. Yeah. But they're not winning. I have a deaf <laughs> fear for them. So how long was, were, were, so you said you were born in Canarsie, correct? Yeah. So now, when did your mom and dad come into Canarsie? Well, they lived on the east side. Now, I remember their address was 92 Allen. And uh, they got complaints from the landlord that my two brothers were making too much noise. They were little kids, you know. Right. One was maybe uh, three and the other one was maybe a year and a half or something. So they had nowhere to play. So they used to run around the hallway. My father came home one day. My mother told him about the landlord. He took my brother and he came to Canarsie. Somebody told him there's houses here. And it's like the country. So that's all my father had to hear. Right. He came mm -hmm. and he put down a $10 deposit. Wow. On, on and he the bought property. the house where amazing. I was born. That's amazing. And that's it was amazing. built maybe a year or two before I was born. Front of the home of C. Lemkin. C. Lemkin was one of Canarsie's uh, oldest residents, 9512 Flatlands Avenue. Lemkin's house dates back to about 1885, and Lemkin had a hotel right down the street on Conklin Avenue. Uh, Lemkin's hotel ran from about 1885 until it was taken over in the early 1900s. So we're standing now in front of the Biggs home. The Biggs home dates to about 1890, located on Flatlands Avenue. And what's really interesting about this large home is one of the few Victorians that we still have left in Canarsie. And the original barn house is still attached to the back of the house. Most of these barn houses have been torn down or, or they've been reconverted into uh, garages for um, 21st century vehicles um, and what's also interesting about this house is that the house belonged to uh, William Biggs and William Biggs is known for his hotel which is called uh, Biggs All-American Hotel and this hotel was located over by the Canarsie Shore. What was working a little bit but not. so my mother says to me to get to get a, to get going, why don't you live with me for a while? So my wife and myself, we lived with my mother and father. We lived with my mother and father, and then my wife became pregnant, and we had the baby over here with my mother and father. Right. As soon as my as soon as I, I got with Betsy Cola, right. because I got in the army, I got out of the army in '46. I got with Pepsi Cola in '49. So for two years, I didn't do nothing because I figured I'm young yet. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, then that was, and that was that story. And then <clears throat> we, we looked in the papers, there was a new project coming up, as she said, 
So I said, we got a baby now. We can't stay in the house with mama and papa. We got a new baby, you know what I mean? So what happened was we moved to Willoughby Avenue. You know where Willoughby Avenue is? Yeah, I sure do. Sumner, Willoughby and Sumner. Yes. We got there. We, needed, we paid, uh, let me see, to get there at that time, when you got to put on the table, money on the table to get an apartment. So I told the landlord, I said, how much did you want for the, you know what I mean? Because you had to go under the table, if you know what I mean. Right. You got to pay to get an apartment. Exactly. At that time. Right. In 40, this was in 46. So what happened was I, we gave him about 300 bucks and the, the uh, and I lived on the ground floor and it cost me $30 for uh, a, a one and a half rooms. Right. One minute, about thirty dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was there for about uh, let me see, about five, about five, seven years. You know, until this thing came out on the paper that they're building Bayview. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're building they Bayview. Building Bayview for, for yeah. Put an application. I put an application, right. and I was making the I was making enough money to get in there, because when you work for a company in this union, mm -hmm. they give you good money. You know, everything was paid for. You know what I mean? Right. And thank God everything worked out beautifully. You know, when we moved here, I had to, like I said before, thirty dollars, something like that. I paid it, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then when I went to Knossi, it raised to ninety three fifty. Now you got to understand how I was shaking. Yeah, no, then, I had, then I had two children. Oh, I didn't tell you about my wife when she was pregnant and my daughter. Right. The ceiling fell on my head. Get out of here. Yes. I went to the hospital, thank God nothing happened to her, nothing happened to the baby. Wow. But everything yeah. turned out beautifully. You got to see my daughter, she's gorgeous and married, children, things like that, you know what I mean? Well, wow. oh, my daughter don't have no children, she's divorced incidentally. Okay. But she got married, she was married for 10, uh, 10 years. Yeah. Anyways, it cost me twenty some uh, dollars, twenty thousand dollars for a wedding, yeah. and I tell her how many times I want it back. <laughs> you give me back. <laughs> what does she say? <laughs> you you to give me back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was fun. I'm telling you, it was great. So, so being that you were at Bayview, do you remember Golden City Park here at Canarsie? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was right in the back there. You, mm -hmm. There used to be a. Um, uh, yeah, Golden, uh, there was little, little, little places like, it was for a lot of colored people. Oh, really? It was strictly for colored people. I didn't know that. Yes, right. most of them. <laughs> the drink and everything. And, uh, it, was, it was, yes, that's what it was mostly, yeah. And after that one, uh, I remember very well, you know what I mean? And there was bar and grills over there and everything, you know right. what I mean? And this is 1949, don't forget, you know what I mean? Right. That's when I started with Pepsi. Mm -hmm. And I was the only truck over here. <coughs> I mentioned that before to you, remember? Yeah, you did, yeah. <coughs> and, the, and that's where it is. And uh, other than that, when ten, and they had that one store there, and like I told you before, and they got this Bayview. What happened was in Bayview, I lived in 2045, that's one of the buildings. And when I lived in one of the buildings, they gave me two rooms, you know, now four, four rooms I had. But on the ground floor they put me because I, I wanted this, uh, the uh, lowest rent there is. Right. So they got me in the lowest rent, which uh, was uh, terrible because the kids, there were so many children right. running up and down the stairs. I had, I was, I had mind raise every day. Right. My, so what happens, I had to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. I got a nervous, I want to be transferred. Since then, Two years I lived there. Then I got out. Where I am now, that's where I am now. Wow. So why did you stay in Bayview for so long? Why? Yeah. Because yeah, my children were young yet. They were young, you know what I mean? They're growing up, you know what I mean? And uh, I can afford it, you know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> it was, it was tough, tough. Uh, you know, incidentally, Pepsi Cola, when I was there, in 1950-something, they went on strike for a year. Right. One year, and I survived That's because I drove a can. We're about to approach a very old prominent house here in Canarsie. It's the Judge Wilson House. Now, the Judge Wilson House has been here since 1867. The descendants of Judge Wilson actually still live here. We're gonna speak to Miss uh, Luck, 
Miss, I Miss Irene Luck, who's actually still living in the, in the house and has been in Canarsie her entire life. Hi, Irene, how are you? Hi, uh, yes. Yeah. Coming in? Yes. It's uh, recording. Oh, there were two families for yes. Quonset Hut? Yes. Wow, this uh -huh. is this is really amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so was it hot in there? Because I heard that the buildings were made of tin. Yeah, they were tin and the windows were very small. Forget mm -hmm. about but I was young so it didn't bother me. <laughs> wow. You know, when you're young they don't, mm -hmm. don't get that hot. And what is this here? And this is a beautiful, this was, th this side, this is by the Canarsi Park. Yeah, right oh. on the same side as the park. Really? Yeah, that was when, you know, people didn't have no place to live. Sure. They put them up, you know. What are these called? Are these the same? Uh, just regular houses, I guess. Yeah, houses. See, housing project. It says sixth lane yeah. Canarsie housing project. Yeah, yeah. I lived on the end one, like, you know. Really? Yeah, and they were nice. Wow. They, we had two bedrooms, a mm -hmm. bathroom, a parlor, a kitchen, and here. a backyard. All that. Yeah, and this little front porch, like, would you believe it? It's funny because it looks thin. It's not thin. It no, was it's not thin. It's it's just that the walls are thin. You know, you could right. hear a lot from the neighbors. Right. I didn't mind, you know. Wow, that's amazing. And they were cute. I like them, you know. Let me see what else you have here. You got some great, great shots over here. So now, so now, so now we, so we got Ruffle Bar here, and Ruffle Bar was originally a part of uh, Canarsie, and um, I believe this, the island of Ruffle Bar, um, was part of the 32nd Ward, which was part of Canarsie, and the island consisted of 60 acres. And I know that hmm. your family, which, you know, you're uh, part of the Schmelk family? That's my aunt, uh, the, the Uncle Will's wife, the judge's wife's right, the family judge's wife. is the Schmelks. So the Schmelks owned 29 acres yeah. of Ruffle Bar. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. I, I read. So they, the first hotels that were built on Ruffle Bar were yeah. built by the Schmelks. The Schmelks. You're yeah. kidding. Yeah. Wow. The, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, I read I didn't that. I know that. <laughs> yeah, so they owned a lot a lot of that land and and um, yeah. and they built on there. Now this is the Arcadia. Arcadia Inn. Uh, yeah. Here was the dance hall mm -hmm. over here. They used to have beer rackets. Beer and, rackets? And every Saturday night they had barn dances. I I wasn't there, I was too young, but my right. mother used to, my father used to go to mm -hmm. them. And my sisters, they loved to dance. They had a big, long dance hall wow. in there. And the arcade was just a bar over here, but that's the dance hall. So the dance hall was part of the Arcadia? Yes, it was all part of everything. It was one entire yeah, unit But there. it was really old, you know. Right. They I, didn't have much. I, I heard it burned down in 60... I don't know 60, when it burned 60, down. 61, something like 1961, yeah. something I was like there that. a few times when I got older, but... Mm -hmm. And it was located there on There was Rock no Royale. more barn dances. They used to get locked up if they were dancing with their own person. My mother, oh, really? yeah, they used to tell me about it. And I wow. said, boy, they had good times. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then what else do we have? We got a nice picture of Canarsie Beach Park. This is when Canarsie was an actual beach and people would go to the beach and they, right? Yeah, they went the down. we went down the beach there, but it wasn't much of a beach. No, you know. it was small. Yeah, well, it wasn't well kept. It wasn't it. well kept. But them days, it must have been better, you know, than right. when I was. This is a 1937 uh, shot of it. Yeah, there wasn't that many and people there. It's, it's even got, so this is probably the original pier that everybody talks about. The, yeah. This, this original yeah. pier over here uh -huh. where everybody always. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, everyone always yeah. talks about the pier. And then we got another picture of Canarsie, Canarsie Beach Park Pier. This is a dark, it's a dark photo, but it's yeah, it's, it's some really, of you really it's, do it's got all justice. The, it's got all the small boats in it. Mm. 1911, so this is really early. And then here's another shot of the Canarsie shoreline. 
this is a nice clear shot of all these now all these buildings have been you know I mean they're gone they're, oh yeah they're, they're definitely been, they've been yeah. torn down yeah, everything's gone. different now this is yeah. very early this is 1906 mm -hmm. and I know that Canarsie had a few fires there was a big fire in 1909, mm -hmm. 1909. Golden City had a fire too right, right? Golden City Park had a fire yeah. Golden City Park had three fires yeah. they had the 1909 fire that brought down the original ark uh -huh. and then you had another fire in 1924 wow and then you had the 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 final blow um, was in uh, I believe 19 I think it was in the 30, it was like 34, 35. There was another fire in, Boy, huh? at, at, uh, at Golden City Park. I didn't know much. Of, my father talked about it when I was younger, but I didn't know too much about it. And um, so let's look at this. This is Uncle uh, Judge Wilson's so the, father. So this, this is Judge. Two, the high school is named after John Marshall, him. So John Marshall Wilson, the school in Canarsie, the, the junior high school. Yeah. John Marshall Wilson is right. named after this gentleman right yes, here. Yes, yes, the father of Judge Wilson. Now, when William Wilson was the one who owned this house, yes, right? Yes, William R. Wilson. So, so this is the William R. Wilson house, uh -huh. and 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 they were both judges, right? The father, yes. The father yes. was a judge, and the the other brothers were like baseball players and yeah. like that, you yeah. know. And a, a Jack was a, a lawyer, yeah. Now tell me who these people are over here. Huh? Tell me who these people that's are. That's Uncle Will and Aunt Lil. That's the judge and his wife. So this is the judge and his wife? Yeah. Is this your yard right here? Is this the, the yard? Yeah, the that's the backyard, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this then, is the daughter, Edith. Oh, this is Edith there. Yeah. She was like a, a huge, uh, almost like a, a historian because she, she kept a lot of artifacts uh -huh. from Canarsie. And right? every time the judge had to go to funerals and everything, she went with him all the time. Wow. She took him to work. Mm -hmm. Every day downtown to really? the courthouse wow. with a car. Through the traffic and the trucks and she took them every day to work. Wow. And this is Hart and Uncle Will the judge. And this is the judge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And then you've got oh you got some more. And this was I remember this photo because this is a shot of um yeah, he talked in after a parade or something. Um, I think this was um, what was that? The World's Fair, the nineteen, the, the nineteen. Is anything marked on there? I don't know. I, I I think I, I I think I read that this was the World's Fair. Yeah, it says World's Fair nineteen. Got good memory. <laughs> World's Fair nineteen thirty nine. William R. Wilson, the speaker, and it it was Carnarsie Day at at the World's Fair. I guess every neighborhood had their own oh, day yeah. or what have you, yeah. and 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 here's the judge and he's speaking mm -hmm. at at the at the 1939 World's Fair, um, and I guess he's talking about how great Canarsie is. I guess <laughs> I wouldn't know. Right? This is his wife here too. She was <clears throat> younger there. Yeah. Now look at this. This is a wow. This is amazing. This is a ballot for. Check this out. This is a ballot for William R. Wilson. When uh, a voting, a voting ballot, right? I guess I don't know much about that. That stuff. is amazing, and you got, um, and this is a picture of his wife on the side here. Keep an impartial and experienced, and able judge, endorsed by all the bar associations. That's really, really rare there. Really great. She was very big in the church, the Grace mm -hmm. Protestant. Oh, she was really. Yeah, she took Grace care of everything over 30, 40 years. I'm going to put this back right here. Mm -hmm. I just stuck them in there because I says, ah, somebody, every once in a while somebody comes and wants to know about the house right. and the judge and this mm -hmm. and that and, and you Fred. Can, and you've and got these great artifacts. I, to I tell tried them about to, it, right? Yeah. Well, it's very hard to tell them because I'm, I was too young to really know too much. You right, know? but it's a great thing that you have all these artifacts because yeah. then you can um, um, speak on it. Yeah. And then, and then you have like the Fred Fetterman collection. And Fred Fetterman, you were telling me, used to build um, a plane airplanes. He built um, airplanes in the back of his, yeah. his yeah. house, yeah. right? Yeah. How many planes do you think he built? Huh? Only airplane? one, only one. one That's right. why when he crashed, is uh, my aunt just wanted certain parts of it, and right. she donated it to that school. They 
they wanted the, for the kids to learn aviation on it, you know? Now, do you know when he crashed? What, what, uh, really, I, I had a piece in the cart, but I don't know what happened to that. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this, or this home or the back of this home was used as his um, aircraft building uh, business. And here are some great shots of an airplane that he built. And this is right behind uh, the building here. And here's a really nice shot. Smaller, but it's, it's a yeah, nice shot yeah. of the house right mm -hmm. behind. And you can see the airplane being built. And you said that he would disassemble the airplanes and then bring them yeah, over. Yeah, I had to, you see, he couldn't go through. I don't think, unless he did go through the streets with it. <laughs> don't, I don't know. Right, you know? there wasn't a lot built. So yeah, all he the could have did that. The, so I guess he could have, right? He could have did that. I guess he could have. Yeah, because it was all lots years ago in farms, you know. So I don't know what to tell you. And then you were telling me that this book here um, is called Wings for Life. Mm -hmm. And um, it talks about a lot of the old uh, aviators. Um, okay, she donated it and everything. Yeah. And it's uh, inscribed by Edith Wilson. And um, she knew a lot about planes. Yeah, get it. she sure did. And then I'm going to read a, 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 a paragraph here that it talks about Fred Fetterman. It says, as I as I clambered out of the out on the wing, the first man to reach me was Fred Fetterman, one of, one of the best early Lockheed mechanics in the country. He helped drag me to safety, and just as we were well clear of the ship, we saw an excited bystander about to toss a lighted cigarette into the pool of gasoline. I yelled, and Fred grabbed me, barely in time. So, Fred obviously saved someone's life and they hey and, i wish i lived in it. those days what's life today hey, there's nothing today you it's know? nothing compared to the way it used to be and they had so much going for them exactly there was a lot of opportunity a lot of freedom to do different things and you know so this is a, a really valuable collection fred fetterman hasn't really been spoken of um at all, because I, I've never heard anything about Fred Fetterman other than through you, you yeah, know? you told me, and so I said, gee, i got to look around. I know I must have something about right. Fred. Right, and you've got these great because artifacts. my aunt really loved him. You've got these great letters, and we know where where a lot of the things were. And then and then what's really awesome is that you also have this, this letter from the Canarsie Board of Trade, and uh, the Canarsie Board of Trade and Chamber of Com uh, Commerce was located at 9209 Flatlands Avenue. And you can see that it says Skidmore 4-0880. And that was back in, uh, this, this letter is dated 1939. But those telephone numbers, when they started uh, adding uh, the numbers to the words, um, was back in the 1920s. And Canarsie had three number designations. We had Skidmore, we had Cloverdale, and we had Nightingale. So some, so someone's number, <clears throat> excuse me, in Canarsie might have been NI1, uh, and then and then four numbers after that, or it could have it could have been uh, the SK1 and four numbers after that, and then the CL1. Uh, for a Cloverdale, and that would have been anyone who has like a 251 number. Did you know that Canarsie had a tourist industry that brought in over 60,000 visitors? when its resident population was only 2,000 in 1880. This all began with Dr. Richard H. Thomas. He became fascinated with turning a town into a huge network of resorts, steamships, and all of that 
would only be possible with a fleet of steam trains to bring tourism and commerce into Canarsie. In 1862, he set forth his vision, and by 1863, he had set up a charter with a starting capital of $35,000. In 1858, he got property from James Remsen in which to build his railroad. He named two men as president and manager. They were the Whitsey Little John and We're here at the home of longtime Canarsie resident John Froland, who's been here since 1933. How are you doing today, John? I'm fine. Good All fine right. Home. Tell me what you remember of old Canarsie. Okay. I was brought up in this house. My sister and I were brought, I was born in this house, I understand. And my aunt was my, 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 my wife's, my, my mother's, uh, my mother's, uh, what you call midwife, right? Mm -hmm. She was a nurse. My Aunt Ruth, she was a nurse, mm -hmm. and she delivered me in the house, but I was taken to uh, Brookdale Hospital, which was which was then Bethel Hospital on, right. on, on the Linda Boulevard. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born in this house, we, we had, my sister and I, my sister was born in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I forget which one, but she was born in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was born in the house. Anyway, I was here. So your father was a house painter? A house painter. So you painted a lot of homes oh, in Canarsie? Oh, a lot of homes, and, and uh, we even did the church. Well, okay, that's, a lo that's another story. That's a, that's good, but <laughs> well, I'm skipping around. Okay. Now, let's go. Don't, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> don't uh, now I'm going to skip now. Okay. Uh, when I was six years, when I was about five, six years old, mm -hmm. I went to 114 mm -hmm. on, on, on Rumson Avenue. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And my sister also went there when she got, when she became of age. So I, I went to 114 over there mm -hmm. by, uh, by on Ralph Avenue, on the Rumson Avenue. Rumson. And uh, I go up there, I, I, I graduated. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 1948, I believe it was. I wow. graduated in 1948. Then I went to Tilton High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father, in the meantime, was doing house painting. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was, in high school, I, didn't, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't get past a certain grade. Wow. So, my wisest counsel told me, you gotta learn it, you gotta, you gotta go to a trade school. Right. My father said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have my son paint houses uh -huh. with me, okay. paint with me. Right, right. So, we're gonna work, we're gonna work with me. Mm -hmm. I was about seven, six, six, sixteen. Mm -hmm. Well, we did a lot of houses, we did a popping house on, on uh, 96th Street. Mm -hmm. And Avenue you well, it was an apartment house there. Right. We worked inside that house. We worked, I painted. We even painted the. I even painted the uh, the uh, lint, The what do you call it? The the fire escape. Oh really? I painted. I painted the fire escape. Mm -hmm. And uh, my well, father, of course. And uh, then I learned how to do house painting and stuff. We did mm -hmm. a lot of jobs here in Canarsie. So that's what you did most of your life was the house painting. No, no, no. no. Now, uh, the Korean War broke out mm -hmm. after the Second World War. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to skip it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the First World it's War. It's okay. The Second World War. Let's go to the Second World mm -hmm. War. We know about the hit that took over Germany and we had a fight, right? Right. And uh, what happened was my father had this car mm -hmm. and we had to paint the headlights with a black line here and a black line here to keep the lights dim right to keep the lights dim so the enemy won't see us at night oh really wow. there, no. and my mother was a uh, civil defense ship. my mother was a civil defense lady really and they used to have uh, on 94th street they have what they call fake 
fake, fake accidents or fake bombings. Right, right. And my mother went out there to give bandages and whatnot. Oh, really? To, you know, to, to, wow. To do things like that during right. the Second World War. Right. And the war, right, we had ration books. I don't have any, but we had ration books. Right. And we, had, we only allowed certain amounts of gasoline. My father had an A on his on his on his window, mm -hmm. on the driver's side. Right. On the driver's no, no, on the passenger side, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, a big a, 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 a card with an A on it. Okay. That was so that he can get gasoline because he was a house painter. Oh, okay. Because you can use the car for business. Right. Not for pleasure. Right, right. We weren't allowed to use this car for pleasure during mm -hmm. the Second World War. So this is the kind of car that your father drove? This is the car, yeah. It was, it's a, a sack replica. Right. A sack replica. Right. A 31, it was a 31 two-door okay. Ford. A 32 door a 30, a 31 two-door Ford. Right. We, and we used to go, when, we, after the war, we went camping, and we put tents here. Right. We put a, we put a, a a, a gate here. Right. Put stuff, the stuff in it. Oh really? And put stuff in it this side. And yeah. we had, my father made up of some kind of like a wooden thing back here. Right. And he put that. He put that like a like, like a platform here. Right. And on top of it, we put some more stuff. More stuff. Wow. And everybody was looking. All the neighbors looking at us. Where you go? We're going to Montauk Point. <laughs> where, where where do you go? Montauk Point. It's oh. Hill State Park. Oh. Okay. Near, near the uh, near the uh, lighthouse. Okay. Near the lighthouse over there. But, uh, oh yeah, okay. Now in Canarsie we had, like Saudi Golden City Park, mm -hmm. when they closed it down, there was a riding academy. A riding academy? Okay, a riding academy. With St. Jude's churches, there was a riding academy called the, the Golden Spur. Oh really? I used to go horseback riding with, I used to go horseback riding really? over there. Wow. Right? We used to go down the Avenue M on the dirt road, go in the back where Hunt and A Street is, I think it was. There's the dirt road, there was all dirt roads back there. Mm -hmm. You could horseback ride. Mm -hmm. And the quant hut, the, the, uh, the, the, the quant hut, not quant, but the, these houses were prefabricated houses right. on CV Avenue. One day, there was a, I passed by this white house uh, with the horse. I passed by this white house, and I forget what, what because there was no street names at that time. It was right. just, just a big, lucky field. Mm -hmm. It was a white house, and there were some guys sitting on there cleaning zip guns. Oh, yeah. Had zip guns, right? Mm -hmm. and, a, and a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. I passed by that I passed by that house mm -hmm. with, with, with the horse, and I made the, I made the left-hand turn to go down to towards where C.V. Avenue was. Right. Towards the corner, towards the prefabricated pre pre houses. Right. Was. Well, what happened was this pickup truck followed me. Really? And they threw rocks at the horse. Really? Right. They threw rocks at the horse. Mm -hmm. My horse took off. Now it, I, it was a, it was like, looked like a race horse because it was ski legs, nice build, mm -hmm. and I, I, I hung on. Like, like you ever seen the movies how the guys ride with it behind yeah. up in the air? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was me. That I was, was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> As we were coming down, we went right to the house. There was a house right there, or a quantum hut right there, well, a prefabricated house right there. Right. The horse went choo, right to the house and I almost fell off the horse because he stopped short. Really? The guys in the truck backed up and went away. Right. So now I'm on city property. Now right. I'm on city and there's people walking there, you know. Right. So I walked the horse on the sidewalk. Yeah. I call it Big Red. That's a Big Red. Big Red. The Big Red was the name uh -huh. of the horse. I put. I walked up on the sidewalk. A lady with a push with a with a, with a uh, stroller. With a, with a stroller came. He takes the horse off the sidewalk. I said, "Lady, this house, this door, this horse can go into my can go into my living room because he saved my life." Mm. He said he saved my life. Mm. As, and he was all sweat up. They wondered why the horse was. My father. My father got this wire made made these here fittings here. Right. My father did all this. He did all that with 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 with, with, with garbage, you know, with with the, with the junk that he put. And he made this. His, he got this here stripping. He made this here, all the way down to the bottom. Painted the painted the flowers here. And uh, that's what that's what I remember about it. What about the top? So and he made that too. Exactly. He made that. Those all handmade. That's all. That's all my father made. And he specifically made it for this corner. Put, put it, put, he measured it out and measured put it, it there. It's really interesting because it says it says 1931 on it, and uh, it's. It's a one-of-a-kind uh, piece. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's handmade. You can. It, it's a handmade piece about yeah. your father. We're standing off of this wooded area right now, 
by Schenck Street, and this was previously the home to Golden City Amusement Park. Uh, the park opened up in May of 1907. Uh, it was opened up by William Warner, uh, and he had his own uh, amusement company called the Warner Amusement Company. Uh, it was actually built by the Traver Swing Company, um, which came in and they built this tremendous park. When the, actually, when the park uh, opened up, it, it had 14,000 lights. Um, it had a, a ton of free band concerts, um, lots of rides that extended all the way to where Canarsie Beach uh, was at that time. So you can walk from the sand into the park back then. When the park opened up in 1907, Canarsie already had established tourism. As a matter of fact, between 1850 and 1907, when the park opened up, Canarsie already had 40 hotels in existence. In 1909, tragedy struck when there was a huge fire, which caused $250,000 worth of damage to Golden City Amusement Park. The next fire that struck after that was in 1924. By 1925, Canarsie opened up again with a huge arena called the Golden City Arena. And the arena featured boxing matches by professional fighters. In 1934 was the final fire that Canarsie, uh, Canarsie's Golden City Park had and that ultimately spelled the end for the park. During the 1920s, Jack and Irving Rosenthal purchased Golden City Amusement Park from William Warner. They are also the same brothers who purchased the Palisades Park out in New Jersey, and they're also the same uh, gentlemen who built the Cyclone out in Coney Island. I'm standing in front of an old shanty that was originally part of Ruffle Bar. Uh, this shanty is one of the last existing buildings that was actually located on Ruffle Bar. If you remember, Ruffle Bar was originally part of Canarsie in the 32nd Ward. The building was brought over by the Schmelk family who owned about 30 acres of the island. The building was brought over in the 1930s and it's the only uh, remnant still standing from that island. Did you know that Canarsie has been the subject of great works of art? In 1882 and 1891, Charles Lewis Fussell painted several Canarsie landscapes that now hang in the Pennsylvania Museum of Art. In 1944 and 1956, Herman Rose painted Canarsie landscapes that now hang in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Okay, so we're here in Mrs. Scalisi's house. Uh, Mrs. Scalisi has been in Canarsie since 1949, where her husband ran a medical firm here. Right, Mrs. Scalisi, how are you doing today? Good. In those days, it was $2 in the office and $3 at home. That, oh. was, that was the money we made. Wow. Right? Mm. So what, $3? Right. I didn't hear you. And, and he would I have the, I have a, a problem, but I have he, two hearing aids that help me. Okay. When they started practice, it was two dollars in the office and three dollars house call. For the yeah. House call. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So that's when the yeah, he would go and he would go to people's homes and that's he would right. call them and he would do the house calls, right? That's and so right. his practice was here. Um, we're on ninety fifth and. But he, and his father, right? his brother, mm -hmm. was a physician before him right. in the same place. In the same building. Right here. Right. And That's they were in Canarsie since the early 1900s. Yeah, they came in. They were here a long time. Long time, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not maybe the 30s, 
1930s. They bought this house. Right. And so you were, so now, what are some of the memories that you have about this area when you first came over here? Dirt roads. Dirt roads. Dirt roads. And you've traveled on foot a lot of times. It wasn't over, but it's the bed roads. No. Nothing. It was bad. It but was country. In time. It was country. It grew. Yeah. It grew to what? The Big Italians time. came here to plant their tomatoes. Yeah. In the summer. That's this right. This was a summer place for right. them. My it's father was country law. place. Right. And then it became, yeah. you know, a place for everything because the war was over and everybody was looking for a place to live. Right. And we had the, the, the Quonset huts down by the shore. Right. And once they got rid of the Quonset huts, they needed a house or an apartment. Sure. And so, and then they had the uh, projects. They went into the projects because they needed a place to live. That's when they lost whoever came. Golden City Park. Which, that's down the it. Terrain. Yeah. Everything that, that was, was at the beautiful. at the Pierce shore down. seemed to disappear because they needed the property for uh, better things. Right. Because the war was over, they needed the property, mm -hmm. and everybody we knew were very helpful to one another because we were all in the same situation. The war is over. They were all looking to uh, have a home and have children. Right. And, and we were very all very close with yeah. the Knights of Columbus, the Lions Club. Right. And we all participated. Right. And we enjoyed each other. Mm -hmm. And we were very close. Mm -hmm. We became friends for life. Right. I find that very difficult today. Yeah. It's not so. It's not the same. No. Right? What we had, we don't have now. So now your husband was also a doctor, just like Mrs. Yes, Felice's husband that's was right. a doctor. And what was his name? Uh, Jacob DeVita. His name is Jacob DeVita. And I'm Louise DeVita. And you're Louise DeVita. And, and I had three children here. Here in Canarsie. Yeah. And you live right across the street from right Mrs. Across, Felice, yes. right? Yes. Our yes. children went to school together. Yeah. They yeah. were the same grade, except that her son was tall and mine was short. <laughs> so between Danny. They all went to school together. And, uh, that was another. Johnny built purely. Tommy was in the middle, mm -hmm. protected by these two giants. <laughs> the children got to know each other like not only friends, but we were very close because they went to Holy Family School together. Mm -hmm. They participated in whatever was happening here. Mm -hmm. And it was very nice. Mm -hmm. Now they're all married, they have their own children and they're not here in Canarsie. And, here in Canarsie, right? and I'll tell you, I have a son in Westchester, he, won't, he doesn't like Canarsie. Mm -hmm. And I have a daughter in uh, Long Island and <laughs> Rockville Center. Wait a minute, Rockville Center. And they come, but very seldom. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're home. They are, they're they are coolers. Yeah. What it's happened to Canarsie when we lived here? Mm -hmm. We really enjoyed living here, really. Yeah. It was what we wanted. The children went to school. They, there was not all this violence right. and all the automobile accidents that you pick up a paper every day and right. especially today in the courier mm -hmm. they're the whole page of automobile accidents they're all in a hurry and they're all kindling each mm -hmm. other that's right unfortunately and people they, are not looking after one another a couple of weeks ago they went into your sidewalk yeah oh yeah more than once yeah. wow. you know mm -hmm. uh we had somebody come right here, up our front steps I know when, right. with a car. Our children were growing yeah. up and we were first here. We looked out for each other. Right. Our friendship was well, real friendship, mm -hmm. more so. Like Teresa, I consider her like a, a sister of mine mm -hmm. because my sister passed away when she was very young. Wow. And she was always there mm -hmm. if we needed to find somebody or do something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There was somebody there to help us. Right. And, well, both doctors are gone. Yeah. Yeah. One doctor didn't, we, we, no competition. 
Right. Yeah. I went to others. Right. Then what's I had Dr. Scalise all the time because I ride across the street. Right. But I knew Dr. DeVita and Louise and uh, right. it wasn't, well, I'm going to him, I'm not talking to you or anything. Right. Right. If anything, the kids would say, if Doc wasn't here, they would run across the street. Right. It right. made no difference made that no we had difference. to wait for Dr. Scalise. Right. We went across. We were like family. We never, like now, mm -hmm. I have neighbors next door, they're very nice mm -hmm. and everything. They're from Hades, one mm -hmm. is from Trinidad, but mm -hmm. they're very nice, but they're not warm like we had it right, before. Right, the way it used to be. It used to be and everything, because when I... Uh, how long have you been in Canarsie? Oh, too look. long. Too long. Too long. Too long. I'm, uh, well, I'm 88, so I was here when I was 10 years old, 77 years about. 77 years. Yeah, it was the end, be the end of May. Right. And, all, and it was horse and buggy. We moved from Williamsburg on a horse and buggy. Right. We had that the L train. Right. We had the L train, right. but we used it. Uh, my, the, the furniture was all delivered with the horse and wagon. Wow! And we came with the L train. The horse. So we came before the horse and buggy came for our furniture. Right. And the reason we moved here, we my we lived in Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. My mother had heart problems, so they said we had all gas stations nearby. Right. And they said we had to move away, and my father and my uncle worked together, and the family was selling the house. And so they thought that the gas stations were well, contributing to, to, to the heart help. problems. Yes. 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 So you moved help. away from the gas station. We moved to here. The country. To the this was the country. This was considered a country. Yes. Many a time, my mother had sisters in the Lower East Side. We would go there, never close our doors, never close the windows. Mm -hmm. We would come home and we would find on our kitchen table and would say, Sophie, we, my mother's name was Sophie. Mm -hmm. Sophie, we were here, had coffee and everything. Thank you so much. We did the dishes. <laughs> and this weekends we had company galore because mm -hmm. we went to Sophie's house to the country. Right. They would come on a Friday. Each one bought their own food or something. Right. We come here on a Friday. And Sunday, around 3 o'clock, everybody said, goodbye, see you next week. Wow. The children all slept, you know, right. in one bed. Instead of sleeping lengthwise, we slept, of course, with chairs to hold our feet. Wow. And we had a ball. Wow. And while the adults were in the grocery, we was younger, but... Uh, <laughs> well, I was born when you moved to Canosa, <laughs> 77 years ago. So that's a long time. I was also yeah. born in Williamsburg. But then my mother uh, bought a house in Ridgewood. Oh, yeah. And that's where I lived until mm -hmm. we moved here when I got married. So mm -hmm. I'm a latecomer. I came in 1961, 61. which is when everybody else is moving away. Right. <laughs> yeah. A little bit, right? So I'm here now uh, 53 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very changed neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But there were streets and everything. I, I don't remember trolley cars or dirt roads. And um, I liked it. It was like a little village. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, every time I met someone, it seemed they had relatives just around the corner. Right. Everybody was related to yes. somebody, you know, so it was really like a little village. Right. And, uh, and then they started building more and more houses, you know, and a lot of people were moving away and new people were moving in. Mm -hmm. And as the new people were moving in, the people who were moving out went to different places. It's right. not that they all went to the same place. Right. So it's not that you could really say that they left Canarsie to go to another place like Canarsie. Right. They went all over. Even that lady that just left Francis, mm -hmm. she said they're in Florida, but they're all in different towns. Right. A, 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 um, an hour away, an hour and a half away. <laughs> so like what we had here, you don't have any place yeah. else. That's why we love her, because we still keep coming to her, right. because this is where we feel we are so comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. And we also have neighbors from Trinidad and Puerto Rico and, um, um, you know, just a lot of the... Um, Hades. My church is all Haitian now. They're right. all from Haiti. Mm -hmm. We have a Haitian mass. And, um, and really just nice people. Mm -hmm. Really just comfortable with everybody. They're approving their homes. This is not a ghetto. This did not become a slum. Right. It's still a lovely blue collar neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And if you have a job and you have family, this is what you want. Mm -hmm. You want something like this right. for your family. This is what everybody wants who comes to America. That's why it's so populated, you That's know. That's right. Did you know that Canarsie was a giant hotel resort town from about 1840 till around 1918. 
Many hotel owners began to advertise their establishments through customized bottles with their names. Here are three specimens from the 1890s. On the left, you have the Noth and Zan bottle. This bottle most likely held beer. In the middle, you have the Vreeland bottle. The Vreelands were a family that owned many establishments, including a hotel. And on the right, you have the C. Bortlesman bottle. This bottle also most likely held beer. As you know, Canarsie had many hotels. We're standing in front of the 1894, what was known as Kayser's Hotel. Now, originally, this was the entrance right here on the corner. The hotel actually also had courtrooms in the basement. The 69th Precinct was previously right next door. And once you got arrested, you went over into this building to see a judge. We're standing in front of what was known as the Wimpheimer Hotel back in 1880. The hotel actually also served as a place for Canarsie residents to pick up their mail. This area here that we're looking at was previously where the Arcadia Inn Hotel were. Uh, next to the Arcadia would have been the Victor Voris Hotel. A little further down, you would have seen Shylands Hotel. And you would have ended up with the Chris Craft Hotel. And all of these hotels were located here on Rockaway Park. Let's fly way up to the clouds. So we're sitting here in front of uh, Frank Sedio's house. We got the Honorable Frank Sedio here. It's really good to see you again, Frank. Always a pleasure. Now, Frank has been a longtime resident of Canarsie, and his family here uh, was, was also here uh, before him. So, Frank, tell me some of the things you remember about growing up in Canarsie. Well, I've been in, my family's been in Canarsie since 1919, so it's a long time that. Uh, uh, we spent, as a matter of fact, uh, I was born 10 blocks from this spot, uh, uh, Glenwood Road in East 83rd Street. Um, to me, Canarsie, I've been in Canarsie my entire life. I sit here every day if I tend just 10 blocks away from where I was born. Wow. So it's kind of a unique experience for me and for most people uh, when I discuss with them. But Canarsie is an enormously interesting community. It's a bedroom community of New York City. It was a bedroom community of, of the city of Brooklyn when it existed. It's a, it's a town that's gone back into uh, way back in, in the beginning of the 18th century when it was first settled. And it was one of the first places settled where there was real population other than Manhattan. Uh, of the Dutch and, the, and then followed by the Germans and, the, and English later on. And if you look around, if you look at some of the churches, the older churches and things, you'll see that that history comes and emanates from them. Both uh, the um, uh, church over, the Episcopal Church over on East 94th Street in Farragut, the uh, right. church up the block here, Grace Protestant Church up the right. block here. That was kind of an interesting thing. Canossi, Canossi's my home. It, it's funny, uh, I, uh, I'm pretty much. Well, I've been involved in a lot of things. I started out as a community activist. If that, that, that's the new fancy term to call right. it, work hard for your community. Right. But at 13 years old, I joined a local organization called the Columbian Squires, which was a teenage program of the Knights of Columbus, which actually existed right up the block here for a mm -hmm. long, long time, mm -hmm. where the Thomas Jefferson Club now is. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was like 1959 when I joined them. Right. And I was also a Boy Scout, the Cub Scout, and Our Lady of Miracles, where my family comes from. From, and uh, which is probably the, uh, the second oldest Catholic church here in Canarsie. Mm. Our Lady of Miracles is celebrating its 75th anniversary wow. in June. Mm. And, and my grandfather.
grandfather and one of the carpenters who actually built the building that's now the church. Wow, look and at so that. We have a unique history with that parish. All of our family members were baptized there, were raised there in, in, the, in religious instructions, and uh, were married there. And we've even buried all of our families dead wow. in that church. So we're very closely connected wow. to that parish. And uh, in June, when they celebrate the 70th, 75th anniversary, they're going to be honoring me as one of the longtime parishioners of, of the church. Fantastic. And I started with the, from the squires. I went into the, uh, it was always the Knights of Columbus, which was one of my most, uh, one of the most treasured organizations I've ever belonged to. My life taught me and gave me the values and, 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 and gave me the kind of, uh, political education I needed to go on into other things, unknowing, of course, at the time. It was just a matter of growing up and doing things in it, which gave me the organizational skills that I have, uh, whatever little they are, had to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, and I started the local civic association here back in 1980. We started the, uh, we, we called it the East 90s Civic Association, and mm -hmm. pretty much represented everything from literally from MUJ up to the Long Island Railroad Trestle, from Rockaway Parkway down to Remsen Avenue. Wow. And uh, it was a very successful civic in its time. And we used to have over 200 members come and attend meetings. Uh, of course, we, we did some really good things, some nice activities. Wow. So it was important, That's, that was the beginning of that, but I was also a police officer, and I, uh, That's right. because of where I worked, um, I uh, would cover Canarsie as well. Part of my responsibility was to cover Canarsie oh, wow. and the affairs officer in Brooklyn South, which I did for over 14 years before I moved on into other things. Mm -hmm. Community work. I got involved in politics when I was 18 years old. Wow. And when I was 18, I started working on a campaign for a gentleman by the name of Frank Brasco, mm -hmm. who was the uh, congressman running for Congress at the time, around 1963. And got involved in his campaign, and that got me my first taste of politics. It got me really, really interested in it. Wow. And next year will be my 50th anniversary doing that. Wow, so fantastic. Long, long you know, I remember you telling me a story about um, when you guys were moving the flagpole that used to belong to the 69th Precinct. That's right. The original 69th Precinct Station House was on, on Glenwood Road between East 94th and East 95th Street. It was a, just a big old house, similar to this one. Right. And it was the station house for years. And in 1972, we opened the new 69th Precinct on uh, Forster Avenue. Right. The building remained empty, and the flagpole was there. Mm -hmm. And we moved that flagpole over to the corner of East 95th Street and Concord Avenue, right. which was, at that time, the Knights of Columbus building. Right. And it still stands there today in the front yard of the house that was built there. So exactly. Wow. I have to tell you, I keep on looking at it and trying to figure out a way how I'm going to take it and bring it over <laughs> here at some point and plant it in the ground right. in front of this house is what mm -hmm. I'd like to do. And yeah. the history of that flagpole. Right. But it yeah. just said it's there. Mm -hmm. And it said what's this decaying. They don't know what to do with it, I exactly. think. That's part of the problem. Yeah. So. One of these days I'll figure out something, maybe with Cornette or somebody to get it over this way <laughs> and try and put it over here on the property. It'd be a nice thing to put on the corner. And you house. told me it was deeply interred into oh, the ground, down right? it's about 12 feet into the ground. So wow. it's pretty, that's part of the problem is that we'd probably never be able to get it out of the ground that yeah. way. We'd have to uh, cut it uh, cut it, then mm -hmm. you know, shrink it down by a few feet to, to just land it <laughs> into the ground. But it'd still right. be a good memento of uh, what Canarsie was all about. Now, what are some of the things you remember uh, about the way uh, Canarsie was laid out. Well, the, 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 the Canarsie has two parts. There's really two parts of Canarsie that a lot of people don't realize. There's the area that runs from around Renson Avenue, maybe East 88th Street on the west, all the way out to around 102nd Street. And from Forster Avenue, which is the north end for MUD up there, down to the water. That section was the, what we call Old Canarsie. It's where we're sitting right now. If you drive through these sections, you'll see most of the houses were very built in the 20s. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, although, by the way, this house is 110 years old this year. That's right. It was built in 1904. And there's a few homes like this, the one across the street, which is now the doctor's office. Right. Uh, there was one you know, that got knocked out. That's renovated right up the block on the corner of 94th. That's also. Right. And the few that you'll, if you walk, if you're going down Flatlands from here to uh, 
pretty much up to 96th Street, you'll see a number of houses like mine. Mm -hmm. And the old, old houses have been converted into offices and business space like that. Yeah. And then, and this part of Canarsie was created for the most part around these houses. Mm -hmm. And it, they're all a result of the amusement park that existed now by the uh, Shore Golden City Amusement Park, which right. at the time, in the 1900s, or early 1900s, became a real summer resort area for people. Remember, we didn't have to build park in the early 30s. Right. So, so this was all one big playland. Right. There was only one way to get there, and that was through the Canarsie Line, what we call now the L train. Right. But the L train used to extend by trolley all the way down to Canarsie Shore. Right. And it ran by a, a series of railroad tracks that exist, that many of the areas where they were still exist today. Right. Uh, if you go up by Servizio Fence over here, right next to their building on 95th, and right next to them, that's the right of way for the railroad. The same thing with the lot across the street is part of it. Mm -hmm. Some of it's been taken over and it was sold over the years, but for the mm -hmm. most part, until really until 1970s when Canarsie High School was built, mm -hmm. uh, even that had the power station for all of this. So That's it was right. a very interesting area. That's right. And from about 102nd Street up to like what is now 108th Street, there were no homes there either. Right. That was another area that was told. Very, very few bungalows, a lot of the old time clamors and then, and, and that area was actually under about two inches underwater. Wow. It was very interesting because we would go out there. There were a couple of boat yards along the creek over mm -hmm. there on Spring Creek, which is now really too low to do anything about it. But back then it was a full creek. Mm -hmm. And we would go out there and you walk on boards to get out because wow. there was about two inches of water that covered that whole area. So much so that the land wasn't considered solid land. And they had a special deed identified called a Torrens deed that mm -hmm. was created for many of the houses mm -hmm. there to give them right and title to the land, to the uh, use of the space as well as the land because it wasn't considered real land back then. Wow, that's that's really amazing. Yeah. That area started getting developed more in the mid-50s and they built what we call now Seaview Village. Mm -hmm. Which it was, we, we thought was going to be actually the harbinger of the rest of Canarsie. Mm -hmm. But in 1961, they changed the zoning regulations and which allowed for these brick attached homes to be built all through the community. Wow. So, but we had our own chicken market on the corner of East 84th Street. Mm -hmm. That was a live chicken market. We'd go in wow. there, my grandma my chicken and we lived down the block. And uh, my grandfather had his own uh, grocery store on the corner on, on Global Road, what is now a Haitian restaurant. Mm -hmm. It was my grandfather's grocery store back in the, oh, really? yeah, in the 30s. And you couldn't, you had to walk to it. There was no, no supermarkets. Right. We had no supermarkets in Canarsie until pretty much the 50s, mm -hmm. and that was on MUL. MUL was the hub of shopping at Rockway Parkway. Mm -hmm. Those two strips were the hub of part of shopping mm -hmm. until Flatlands Avenue was completed back in the 60s and all those stores opened up. Wow. So we, we, we had a supermarket there, and we had one on Rockway, uh, we had three on Rockway Parkway, all privately owned supermarkets. They weren't big chain supermarkets like we have today. Right. The A&P was the first big chain, and they were on uh, Ralph Avenue and was right off of Farragut right now, which is like the auto zone, I think. Is right, yeah. right. So, but that was one of our first supermarkets. And Bohack, which was on um, uh, Avenue L, which is now the, uh, I think it's used by the uh, cable cable division right. as an office space. Right. So but it was a very different place than it is today, but it was a great place to grow up. A great place to grow up. So Canarsie Firefighting History started back in 1859 on a firehouse um, on Rockway Parkway. Um, this is what the firehouse looked like. Originally it was just torn down about two years ago.
uh, Canarsie, uh, what was called the, the Flatlands Fire Department, covered the entire area of Flatlands, not just Canarsie. Uh, so they covered Mill Basin, they covered uh, parts of Marine Park, so they went way out there. Um, they had three separate firehouses. One was located on East 95th Street uh, and, and uh, Conklin. Uh, there was another firehouse located uh, at the shore. We believe the hose company was located there in 1891. And there was a gentleman who was a retired firefighter who had a house on, uh, on 95th and Avenue Well, and his house, although it wasn't a firehouse, uh, what he did is he put a bell on top of his house, and um, he would sound the alarm if he knew of a, of a fire that was going on. And a lot of people believe that uh, his house was a firehouse, but indeed it was just it was just kind of like a building that commemorated uh, Canarsie firefighting history. The Canarsie police history began back in 1888 when a justice of the peace was nominated in Canarsie. By 1893, an act was passed by the legislator to put an actual police department in Canarsie on Conklin Avenue and East 95th Street. In 1904 marked the earliest time when the Canarsie Precinct lost its first policeman in the line of duty. This occurred on November 20th when James W. Devins died on his way to a fire. The second Canarsie officer to die in the line of duty was Joseph Hitz. He died on February 14th, 1939. On May 22nd, 1926, the Canarsie Police appointed its first black policeman. His name was Samuel J. Battle. These two murals show two of the Canarsie police officers that have died in a line of duty. We have Raymond So we've come to the end of our historic walk through Canarsie, and I want to thank everyone involved for participating in the making of this documentary. And remember, there's more to Canarsie history.